Welcome back to Pokemon Legends Arceus. Today we've got a special video because we're going to be going after all the mysterious wisps scattered across the Hisui region in order to obtain the not so legendary but pretty special Pokemon Spiritomb. Now this quest actually begins after you've defeated the first noble Lord Cleavor. Upon returning to the village, you will meet this mysterious little girl who talks about these wisps that have been scattered across Hisui. She says there are 107 of them in total that you must collect, with 7 being right here in Jubilife Village, and 20 of them being found in each of the 5 areas. So we're going to be going in order from the Obsidian Fieldlands all the way to the Icelands and finally wrap it up right here in the village. If you guys are excited, make sure to smash that like button because we're on our way to completing the Pokedex and finally taking on God Arceus. And we're going to start our scavenger hunt in the Obsidian Fieldlands. You can already see I've got all of the Wisps marked with a star, and I recommend as you find each of these to mark it for yourself so at the end you can compare with my map and see which one you might be missing. So beginning from the Fieldlands camp, we're going to make our way all the way across the Horseshoe Plains over to where the Alpha Rapidash will spawn in and nearby you're going to see this little rock formation with the Wisp on top. Again, at this point, I recommend you mark it with a star or whatever symbol you prefer, even if you've already got the wisp there, just so you know that you've already got that one, because next up, we're going to be heading straight across the river and over to the Grueling Grove, where you'll see this rock formation, and towards the top, you're going to find the next wisp. I don't think it absolutely needs to be nighttime to collect these, but it is way easier since at night, the orbs can be spotted from way farther away with their purple glow. Straight south, we're going to have the Obsidian Falls, and that is where our next wisp is located. So straight across from where we just found the last one, we're going to fly towards the waterfall and kind of near the base of where it crashes in the river, you're going to notice this little island, and that is where the next wisp is located. Now from this spot, we're kind of low, so we're going to stick through the river and head towards the Worn Bridge. You can do this on Braviary or Basque Legion, whatever you prefer. I find Braviary to be a little faster, but we're basically going to make our way through these two arches, which are the Worn Bridge. And after going under the second one, tucked away in the corner, you will spot the next Wisp. This one is a little tricky because it is in this corner, but just keep in mind it's right by the Worn Bridge. And next we're going to head to the Deer Track Path, which is the little road that leads you up to the Heights Camp where you once fought the Alpha Cricketoon. And to the left of this path, you'll find the next Wisp. Next, we're actually going to be heading to the Heights Camp, so I just recommend teleporting from here make it a little bit easier because our next Wisp is all the way up on that Pride Rock looking thing. At least that's what I like to refer to it as because it reminds me of the Lion King. So again, you can use Sneasler or Braviary to get up here a little bit quicker. And from the top of the world, we'll grab our next Wisp. And from here, you can pretty much see the entirety of the field land. So turn around all the way till you see that heartwood tree because straight to the east, we're going to have our next wisp. So hop on Braviary. We're going to fly straight across over to this rock formation before it. You should already spot the next wisp on top of it. From up here, we're going to fly straight across over to the Orberg Tunnel. Again, the heartwood tree is right over there, but we're flying straight towards the sort of forest or more like this mountain because on top of it, you will see the next wisp. I don't know why Sneasler is not coming. I need you right now, buddy. From here, we're going to head south and there's a whole bunch of wisps to grab alongside the Heartland Forest area. So we're going to fly towards the tree kind of hugging the river because on these cliffs as long as you fly sort of low alongside the river you will eventually spot it our next one should be pretty easy to spot if you fly straight across through the woods you should see it but if you need a little bit of help locating it it is actually right next to the dam where the alpha b barrel once spawned in like I mentioned, we're going to keep heading south through the heartwood for the next two wisps, just away from the tree and right through the rest of the forest. We're going to hug the edge of the map and you will see along these cliffs is our next wisp. And finally, all the way down to the edge of the map almost, we're going to soar or ride past the Alpha Law Pony to the edge of this little strip of land. We can grab our next one. And from here, we're going to fly straight across the water to Ramanas Island. Don't mind if I do, La Pony. <laughs> Pretty easy. Just fly straight across and you should see it overlooking the little forest in the middle where the Alpha Infernape is usually at. 
And speaking of alpha Pokemon, we're gonna make our way once again across the water to the Sand Gem Flats towards the area where Alpha Alakazam spawns in. There's a couple of rock formations here and on top of one of them, you can find the next Wisp. Now at this point, all of the Wisp are kind of far, but we're gonna make our way to this little island to the north of Ramanas. If you fly straight from where we got that last Wisp, you should have enough height to fly straight there with Braviary, even while you're speeding through. Our bird buddy should have just about enough fuel, and that is where you'll find another Wisp. Don't mind the space-time distortion forming over here. We're gonna fly once again across the river and sort of towards the heartwood tree. That's a good indicator that you're heading the right direction. You won't have quite enough height, but it's fine because you can actually call Braviary once again while on land and make it just about to this pine tree where you'll find the next wisp. Now there's only one remaining in this middle section, so teleport on over to the Heights Camp, and immediately to the right, you can fly or hop on Wordier. You're gonna see these two pine trees on a little hill, and that's where the next Wisp will be. Some of these I collected way earlier in my playthrough, so that's why the number might be off, like how many Wisp remain, but don't worry, as long as you're marking each of these as you collect them, at the end you can compare it to my map and see which one you might be missing, because next we're gonna be heading across the river. We're looking for the area where Alpha Snorlax spawns, and you probably spotted this Wisp if you were in this area before. You can get it pretty early on, even with just Wordier. I managed to hop my way up the rocks and grab that next Wisp. Finally, we have just two remaining. One of them is inside the Lake Rarity Crater, but I actually recommend teleporting over to the Fieldslands Camp next and straight behind where you spawn in. You can hop on Braviary and fly right over these rocks. As soon as you do, you'll already see the next wisp on top of this little rock thing. Now just one more remains and it is the one inside of Lake Verity. Now the reason we teleported to the camp earlier is because from here we can actually fly straight across and almost make it over the crater itself. It's fine if we don't because you might miss it if you fly too far. Peeping down right over the edge we will see our final wisp. And now we've collected all the ones in the field lands. Hooray! If you've been marking each of the locations like I suggested earlier, you can now pause the video and compare it with the map in your game to see if you have stars in all of the spots where I do. There should be 20 stars in total, so if you're missing one, like I said, pause the video and make sure you have each of these areas marked with a star. That is where all the wisps will be. Continuing in the order of the story, we've got the Crimson Mirelands up next where once again there are 20 wisps to collect. And it might look a little overwhelming, but we're basically going to do a big circle around the entire area grabbing these. Starting from the Mirelands camp, the first one should be pretty easy to spot right at the entrance in the Golden Lowlands. We're going to hop on over this little ridge and all the way at the end you should spot it. In this very same swamp, we've got two more immediately to the right. You can hop on Braviary and fly across the woods. You will see the wisp at the very end of this little crevice. From here, we're gonna head straight south across the Great Jaw Bog. Having Braviary definitely makes things easier since you've got that bird's eye view. So just climb on him and fly over the forest. Even if you don't get enough altitude, it's fine. You can hop back on him and eventually you will see that wisp. And from here, we're gonna continue heading straight south over these couple of ponds slash swampy islands. And to this area here in the corner, we've actually got a wisp in the middle of one of these ponds. Unfortunately, the water didn't break my fall there, but this is fine. Now we're gonna head to the right towards the home of trials. Again, having Braviary is a great help, but you can't actually fly over these mountains. I believe there is an invisible wall and we cannot go any further. So I recommend staying away from them so you can actually see where you're going because the next wisp is actually gonna be right around this mountain. Again, we're gonna keep heading to the right or east and this one will be right in the middle of the pond with the Hisuian Saligu that we struggled against way back in the beginning of the game. Now, I don't think my team would really struggle against it, but we're not even gonna bother fighting it. Just grab that wisp and get the heck on out of there. And continuing to the right, we've gotta head over the river and pretty much over this whole landmass, or at least to the end of it. In the very corner, you should spot the next wisp. Now, let's flip our camera over to the north, and we're basically gonna hug the right side of the map as we head sort of towards Mount Coronet, but like I said, just hug the right side of the map until eventually you see that wisp 
might fall down a bit, but just keep on calling Braviary and fly your way to it. Now from this point, there's a whole cluster of wisp that we can make it to, but we're gonna start off with the one immediately to our northwest, I believe. And look at that, I almost went past it, but you'll notice this sort of dead tree, and that's a dead giveaway that that is where your next wisp will be. And like I said, there's a couple of wisps we can go to next, but we're gonna head for this one straight across the river. There's a lot to the north, but don't get distracted. Just turn your camera a little bit to the left, and across the river, like I said, you will see this one. And now again, we're gonna turn to face Mount Coronet, and already you should spot a couple of wisps. I see one down here, and then another one right up ahead. There might even be a third one that I guess is not spawning, or we're a little bit too far, but let's go ahead and grab this one for now. And another right across the river near where that Togetic spawns. This one's a little tricky to spot from above, but if you head from this angle, you'll see it nice and easy right at the base of the waterfall. And speaking of waterfall, the next one is actually at the very top of it, towards the right side. It's a little tricky to get up there. Maybe you can get some assistance from Basque Legion and Braviary and Sneasler too, for good mention. All the Poker Rides are working together to grab this wisp at the top of the waterfall. Now from here, we can fly all the way down to the next one pretty easy. I can actually already see it just barely, which is why I recommend doing all of this at nighttime. Makes hunting down these whips so much easier because you can see them from miles away sometimes. And one more directly to the west. So from the previous spot, we're gonna fly straight ahead. And there it is. Even through the fog, we can still see it shining. Although I guess if you're having some trouble, I recommend just sleeping at the tent resetting the weather and maybe that fog will go away. Which is exactly what I'm gonna do because we're gonna be teleporting for our next wisp anyway, so let's head back to camp. Beautiful, okay, so from here we're actually gonna teleport over to the diamond settlement. If you don't have these fast travels unlocked, you just have to visit the area once and then you should be able to teleport your way there because immediately to the left of the settlement, you'll find this rocky formation with the next wisp on top. And now for the final four wisps, we're gonna teleport once again to the Brava Arena. That'll give us a nice height advantage so we can fly to the rest of them. So from the arena's entrance, we're gonna fly a little bit to the right and down into the valley. You should already see a couple of wisps shining, but we're gonna make our way to this one first. And now from here, you should already see this next one right up ahead. We don't even need to fly to it, but we might as well, I mean, could have taken some damage if we hopped down on Wordier. You never know, we wanna take the safe approach. So glide on down and grab your next one. And only two more remain. The next one is straight across this valley or sort of little forest here. So watch out for those Murkrows and Haunch Crows and all the way in the corner to the right, you'll find the next one trying to hide from you. Finally, we're gonna head straight south, hugging the river here or the cliffs alongside the river, whatever you wanna say. As you dive down into the valley, you will find the final wisp of the Mirelands. Make sure you're marking each of these as you follow along. That way, at the end, you can look at your map, see where you've placed your stars, and if you're missing any, there are actually 20 in total in each area, and there's 20 markers that you can place down, so that's a good way to tell if you've got them all. Next, we're gonna hunt down all the wisps in the Cobalt Coastlands. Once again, there are 20 of them in total. And starting off from the beachside camp, the first one should be pretty easy to spot right as you're heading out into the coastlands. On the right side, there's a little cliff with your first wisp. From here, we're gonna be heading down the right side towards a palm hill. You should spot the next wisp actually just from where you picked this one up. So make your way down or fly with Braviary. Either way works through the greenery and to the second one. Now again, we're gonna keep heading straight across the Apom Hills. I highly recommend having Braviary here because it just makes everything so much faster and you can fly right over any annoying Pokemon. And straight towards these little cliffs, we will find our third Wisp. We're continuing down this stretch of land towards the area with those weird fingers. Let's call upon Braviary and soar right over the ridge towards the Bather's Lagoon. And in the center of said lagoon, there is a little tiny island with our next wisp. To the south, we've got the Hideaway Bay and our next wisp. So let's call upon Braviary to fly 
right over these little mountains. Immediately, you're going to make a sharp left because the next wisp is going to be on a little island over this way. And we could fly on to the next one, but it's probably faster to just teleport on over to the Coastlands camp. And from here, call upon Braviary to soar right over the tent because on this other little rock formation slash tiny island, we're going to find another one. Yeah, there's a lot of islands here in the coastline. It's not really a surprise. Again, we're going to teleport to camp just to make things even quicker and turn straight around, call upon Braviary, and fly over to this set of little islands for the next wisp. Just don't fall into the water like I did. <laughs> And finally, from here, we're going to go all the way to the tip of one of the weird fingers of these archipelago. Is that what the right word is? I don't know my bodies of land, okay? There's a lot of little islands and peninsulas and things here in the coastlands. Not really a surprise, but there you go. Now we're done with the bottom half of the coastland, so let's teleport on back to the beachside camp to take on all the wisp in the north. From the camp, we're going to make our way right past the professor and try to jump over this way so we can get a little bit of extra height with Braviary and hopefully make it all the way to our first wisp nice and smoothly. From this little rock, we're going to head into the ocean. We've got a wisp actually on another little rock island. Surprise, surprise. There's going to be a lot of those here in the coastlands, but soar or swim to it. Either way is fine. We're going to head into the Tranquility Grove and grab it. But we're actually looking in the right direction because the next wisp is actually over near the Veilstone Cape. At the edge of this right side, there's an area that you can sort of climb up. I don't know if with Wordier exactly you can try, but again, I recommend just having all of the ride Pokemon so that you can way easily climb or fly to anything and grab it. And from here, we're going to keep climbing up to the Veilstone Cape and towards the next Wisp, which again, Braviary makes this a whole lot easier. Okay, never mind. Braviary don't even reach, but we'll get a little extra assist this way towards the cliffs. We're going to find our next wisp. And the next one is really close by, but not necessarily in terms of distance, because it is a very far low where we just were. So we're going to drop on down to get Braviary to save us from certain doom and make our way to it. We lost a lot of height there, but it's okay because Braviary can get us right back up and over towards the turnback cave for our next wisp. Would have been a lot easier if we could fly to it from our previous vantage point, but then we would have missed the one down below. So we're going to slowly trot our way over and then climb up the mountain the good old fashioned way to grab the next wisp. Thankfully, now we're a little higher up so we can fly on over the turn back cave crater or hole thing. Braviary is going to be able to make a clean over and on to the next wisp. From here, we're going to head once again over the cave and to the very edge of the beach. We could get on top of the crater and get a little bit of extra height, but I don't think we really need it. We're just going to sail our way over to the coast. And actually, before the coast, there is a little mountainy area here with the next one. Now, the final few wisps are all located around Fire Spit Island. I recommend just teleporting to it, but for this first one, I think we can just fly straight to it. So all the way across the ocean right in front of Fire Spit Island, there is a very remote little rock island with the next wisp. And now we're going to teleport on over to the Molten Arena. There's three more wisps all around Fire Spit. So the first one, we're going to hop on Braviary and immediately turn around and fly straight down towards this island behind Fire Spit. There is another very remote wisp. Now from here, you're kind of stuck. So again, recommend just teleporting on back to the island. And the next wisp is actually going to be right on the volcano's homeland. Around the base of it, you can't fly over the lava pools, unfortunately, so be careful of those invisible walls and make your way to this one. And finally, we've got one more on a remote little island right over Fire Spit. So from the previous one, we will get on Braviary and make a bit of a left turn here towards this island with the two trees. We're going to dive on down and collect our final wisp of the coastlands. A lot of teleporting, but overall pretty easy. As with the previous areas, I recommend marking each wisp as you find it, and then you can compare it with my map here. You should have 20 in total, and that is it for the coastlands. 
Now it's time to take on the Coronet Highlands. Once again, there are 20 Wisp in total, and we're gonna start off with probably the hardest one, or the one that is people are most likely to miss, and that's because it's actually inside of the Wayward Cave. So from the entrance camp, we're gonna head right on over to it, and upon entering the cave, we're gonna hug the right wall. Past these torches, again, just hugging the right wall here straight ahead. We're actually going to want to call upon Basky Legion and keep hugging that right wall into this chamber with the Alpha, Crobat, and hopefully they don't spot us. Of course they do, which is going to make this a little bit annoying on our way out, but there is that Wisp. Now, if you didn't get spotted, you could immediately teleport out of here, but because I messed up, I will instead run! And we're going to teleport back to the Highlands camp. Now, from the start of the level, we're going to head up and to the right you can get on Braviary for this, but it's really not necessary. I feel like Wordier goes just as fast on land, and this is kind of an uphill climb, so Braviary might actually be slower, but all the way on the right, we're going to find our first one. And now we're going to head back towards the Wayward Cave, but actually to the top of it. So hop on Braviary and glide your way on over to the waterfall where the cave entrance was at. But this time we're going to get on top of the cave. From here, we've got another one down the stream, a little bit down lower on the highlands. So we're gonna dive on with Braviary towards the river, and at the very end, you will spot that wisp. Perfect landing. Next, we're actually gonna head inside the ancient quarry, or quarry, I've never known how to say that, but from the last spot we were at, we're gonna hop on at Braviary to reach the Wayward Wood and head over to the entrance to the quarry. Now here, we can hop on Braviary or get stuck on the wall. That is fine because the next wisp is gonna be right on top of this stone tower. Our next wisp is straight ahead, so we can actually stay inside the quarry. For some reason, you can't use your mounts while on top of that rock, so just fall on down and then call upon Wordier to head straight on out of there, and immediately you will spot the next wisp as you exit. So let's get on Braviary and soar down to grab it. And again, from here, we're going to keep heading straight on to our next one. We're going to fly up to the Celestica Trail and then call upon Braviary one more time so we can get enough height to get on this cliff side and grab the next one. Now from this point, we're pretty high up, but we're gonna go even higher up to the Clamberclaw Cliff. So let's call upon Braviary and try to reach this little edge right here so we can just keep on going even higher and up towards this area. Okay, we're just gonna climb this tree on accident. You can actually see the wisp over there, but I am just, oh my God, what is happening with my rides right now? I have no idea, but in the middle of this little pond, you're gonna find the next one. And finally, on this right side of the map, we've got one more. So again, we're gonna hop on Braviary from this little pond and just fly to the edge of the map on the left side. We're just gonna keep hugging the edge here towards the ocean and the next wisp will be right here at the edge in between two pines. And like I said, that is it for the right side of the map because next we're actually gonna be teleporting over to the summit camp to get the rest of the wisp. So starting from the camp, we're gonna hop on at Braviary and go right on over to Moonview Arena where we fought the Hisuian Electrode Noble. And to the right side of the big tree, we're gonna have our first wisp. Turning around from there, we're gonna head towards the Temple of Sinnoh, but not actually up the mountain or anything, just towards this icy ravine where you normally find the Alpha Electivire, but we're actually heading to the right side of it. On the cliffs, we're gonna have another wisp. And now we've gotta head down into the ruins, the Sacred Plaza or Celestica. Okay, never mind. Basically just down into this area with the Alpha Luxray. We're gonna go a little bit farther past and down into this area near where the Dialga and Palkia statues are at. There is this circular column area and in the middle will be another wisp. For some reason that one felt more important than the rest, but next we're going not very far off actually. We're just gonna hop on Braviary and right over this cliff we should already spot it. Yep, right below us. So down we go! <laughs> Make sure not to take too much fall damage there and grab it. Again, not heading far for the next one. It's gonna be to the west, so we're gonna once again fly to get up on this area, and you should already spot it up on that little cliff next to where the Alpha Rhyperior spawns. Watch out for that guy. He's a little angry. 
And for this next one, you can teleport back to the base camp or just fly straight from here. We're gonna have to go over these mountains, but we're gonna make our way to the cemetery where the Alpha Miss Magius usually lurks, at least at nighttime. I guess it's called the Stone Tooth Rose, and here we will find the next wisp, very appropriately tucked in a cemetery. Next, we're gonna head down the Boulder Roll Ravine towards the area with the Alpha Golem. You can do this on Wordier if you want, but I guess if you fly, it makes it a little bit faster. You can just go right on over all these mountains and then swoop down into the ravine itself to grab the next wisp all the way in the corner of it. Again, this is close to where the Alpha Golem spawns and we're actually gonna head right over it next. We're gonna be a little bit low on Braviary, but it's fine. Sneasler can carry us the rest of the way right on up and over this cliff and you will already spot the next wisp i didn't actually need to fly there but this is fine we'll make it nice and easy just three more wisps to get and next we're gonna head across this body of water and pretty close by you should spot the next wisp ah yeah there it is kind of close to where magnezone is seen flying about and finally, we're going to head down into the Fable Spring. It's best to just follow the path across the bridge and to the left a little bit, you will spot the next wisp up on the cliff. And last but not least, right across the Fable Spring, which I'm going to guess is this little pond right here, we're going to fly right on over through the forest and spot our final wisp all the way at the end of it. And that's it for the Coronet Highlands. So again, make sure to mark them each as you're collecting and compare with my map right now. You should have 20 in total, keeping in mind that there are two near the Wayward Cave, one inside and one on top. Finally, we're gonna take on the Alabaster Iceland. And once again, there are 20 wisps to find here. So kicking things off from the Snowfields camp, we're gonna turn all the way around 90 degrees and straight behind the camp, we're gonna find some cliffs, make our way up them with word ear and find our first wisp. I recommend starting with this one because next we're gonna be soaring straight across the White Out Valley and coming up here will give you a little bit of extra height with Braviary so you can make it straight across to this sort of cliff side. Try to land as high as possible and then call Braviary again so you can soar over to this second cliff and then hop over to Wordier and claim your second wisp. From up here, we can pretty much reach across the entire Bone Chill Waste, but we're actually gonna stop a little bit early for the next wisp, which is right around the curve of the mountain. We're gonna dive down and grab it. From this spot, we're gonna head straight into the Bone Chill Waste. There's actually two wisps, but one of them is located down underneath the ice caves. Probably one of the ones that most people will have trouble with here in the Icelands at least, but before we get to it, when you're sort of heading towards the Avalod's legacy, there's going to be a wisp among the snowy slopes. Now at this point, you can either go towards the ice caves, but I'd rather leave it for last so we can just teleport on out of there. So we're gonna fly straight across and through to the Avalod's legacy where we're gonna find one of the wisps on the icy blocks that surround the big middle molar. <laughs> And backtracking a little bit, there is another wisp at the top of this rock formation near the edge of the map. Definitely reminds me of the Pride's Rock from the Obsidian Fieldlands, except a little more snowy. So climb up onto that and claim your next wisp. Once again, we're gonna use the height that we gain from being on top of here to soar to our next one, which is gonna be in the Heart's Crag area. Near these twin waterfalls or towards the right of it, you will see some cliffs. So you're probably gonna need Sneasler to help you climb up a bit higher to claim your next wisp. And now finally, we're gonna go for that wisp that is down in the ice caves. I recommend entering from this hole in the ice right here. My marker is actually showing where the beginning camp is. So if you wanna make your way from there instead, it'll just be straight forward. And once you make it into the cave to make sure you're in the right one, you're gonna see a sort of fork in the road where a lot of Hisuian Zoroar and even Zoroark sometimes spawn is where we will find our wisp. Rather than walk our way out of here, I like grabbing this wisp last because then we can just teleport straight over to the Ice Peak Camp for the next one. And from here, once again, we're gonna turn 90 degrees behind us over to this cave. The first time you come here, it's actually gonna be covered by some rocks, but you can easily send out any one of your Pokemon to smash those, and inside, you will find the next Wisp. Once again, to save a little bit of time, we're gonna teleport back to the Ice Peak Camp, and this time, instead of turning 90 degrees, we're gonna hop on Braviary and start making our climb up to the Snowpoint Temple. 
Unfortunately, you can't teleport to Snowpoint Temple, but that's fine because our next Wisp is actually on the way. Climbing up these sort of steps on the left side, you're going to find it. And this is as far as the main path will take us because next we're soaring over to Lake Acuity. That wisp that I went over is the one in the cave, so we've already claimed that one instead. Now we're going to fly to this cliff. Might need a little bit of extra climbing, but that's fine. The extra height is much appreciated because we're going to need to soar straight over the waterfall's edge. And you will spot the next wisp also at the edge. Now it's finally time to head to the Snowpoint Temple. There are two wisps that we can claim in this area. One is going to be outside of the temple towards the left. There's a little hill you can climb up and claim it. But more importantly, there is a wisp actually inside of the temple. Probably one of the ones that most people will have missed. Definitely sneaky of them to put one inside of this dungeon, especially with how big and empty it is. It's kind of tedious. We're going to run all the way through past the first puzzle, the first door that we opened. And immediately after, you're going to make a hard left turn and you will spot it in the corner. Now, at this point, I doubt anyone wants to walk all the way out of the temple. Thankfully, we can teleport straight on out of there and over to the Pearl Clan settlement where our next wisp is located. From where you spawn, just go straight ahead and behind one of the tents, you will spot a sneaky little wisp hiding. Again, we have sort of a dead end, so we're going to teleport all the way across the map and to the Ice Peak Arena. And from here, we can basically reach all the wisps that we are now missing. So straight past Craig or whatever that guy's name was, we're going to fly on this way near another one of the ice caves. We're going to swoop all the way down and I am definitely, oh my god, almost took damage there. <laughs> There's another one nearby, but it's probably faster to just teleport to the arena again. So we're going to fly straight behind us this time and down into this sort of crater area. In the middle of it, we are going to find another wisp. And we're going to teleport to the Ice Peak Arena one last time for the final four wisp. Now, this one is immediately to the left of Craig. I'm going to slide down the little slope and grab another one real close. From here, we could again teleport up to the arena or just fly with Braviary to get a little bit of extra height because the next wisp is all the way across the valley at the top of this mountain formation. Just keep on flying straight and eventually you will spot it at the tippity top and grab it. From here, we're going to fly into the avalanche slopes for our final two wisps. That's why I recommend going for this. You can get plenty of height to make it down into this area. Pretty easy to spot Wisp. I'm sure that everybody's got this one, but right in the middle of the avalanche slopes. Finally, we're going to head all the way into the slopes, sort of near where the Alpha Garchomp spawns in or a little bit to the right of it. There is a sneaky Wisp hiding among the crevices. Just drop on down to grab it and take some damage, but it's OK because we've got our final Wisp in the Alabaster Icelands. Make sure to drop a stamp as you're collecting each of them and now compare it with my map to see which one you might be missing. Keeping in mind that one of these is down underneath in the ice caves and of course the one inside of Snowpoint Temple. Those are probably the two easiest to miss as well as the one in the cave across from Ice Peak Camp where you have to smash those rocks. Those are probably the three trickiest ones in this area at least. Now that is a total of 100 wisps so far and that just leaves the seven found in Jubilife Village. Starting with the very first one we ever got. This one is pretty hard to miss. I mean, I don't think you can possibly miss it as it's part of the intro to the quest. But the other six might be a little more elusive. And I collected these a while ago, so finding the footage was a little difficult. But we're going to start here in the farm right behind this little tool shed next to the Hale Bay. We're going to find our second wisp of the village. Now, for some reason, most of the wisp here in the village are behind buildings. And this next one is going to be behind the training grounds where Captain Zizu can teach you new moves. Just walk on behind it and grab it. There's another one located right behind the Galaxy Expedition Team's headquarters, aka the giant building in the center of the village. And you might notice it's not even nighttime right now. I guess the ones in the village are a little easier to spot even during the day. So I'll just walk behind there real quick and grab it. There's another wisp behind some of these houses by the river. I guess the closest landmark would be this water mill thing. You might have to walk around the bridge towards the training grounds to reach the area, but it's just there not blocked by anything, just grab it. 
And lastly in the village, because the next one is technically outside of it, but here inside, there are these little alleys. And if you go around the buildings, you can actually find a way to get in there and locate the sneakiest wisp of the village. And finally, the most elusive wisp of the village is all the way down at Prelude Beach, where our journey began. If you've been down here at night or in the evening, you've likely already picked up this wisp. It's pretty out there in the open. During the day, it might not appear until you get real close, but yeah, just next to the shed. So now that we've collected all the orbs, it's time to report back to that mysterious little girl. And I do believe she was right across the bridge here in the village. I forgot her name, but we're going to find out in like two seconds. It's Vesta. And now that we've got 107 wisps, she is going to give us a little present. Oh, wait, you get presents for just five? Oh my gosh, we're going to get so much stuff out of this, aren't we? For 10 whisk, we will get a rare candy. For 20 whisk, we will get a seed of mastery. 30 will get you a dust stone. 40 will get you a... Oh my god, am I really going to do this the whole way through? Okay, well, you can see what the rewards we're getting right there on the screen. They're all pretty dang good so far. A reaper cloth. That is definitely the first one I've gotten of that. But of course, you can also buy them from that lady with the uh, merit points. Three seeds of mastery now, more EXP candies, and three grit rocks for 100 wisp. We've still got seven more though. What are you gonna do, girl? You gathered every last one. I really can't take you. And oh my God, look at her face, dude. She's so happy. Now we can finally seal away that havoc wreaking bundle of mischief once, oh, wait a minute. You didn't mention nothing about no mischief. I don't do mischief. We'll need to go to the Shrouded Ruins, the only place the ceiling will work. We should meet there at the same time of day as when we first met. Hope you remember. Uh, I definitely don't. Was it at nighttime? Oh yeah, the game literally tells you. Okay, so off to the Crimson Mirelands then. Now off to the Shrouded Ruins we go. There is actually a Spirit Tomb Rock that I've noticed here before, and I was guessing that it wasn't going to activate until we've got all the Wisp, and it seems that is exactly where we've got to meet with the mysterious Vesa. Why are you sneaking up like that? Oh my god! So creepy! First of all, a confession. I may have told you one teeny tiny lie. Oh, come on. About the wisp. There are actually 108. Oh, okay. I thought she was going to say, we can't even get Spirit Tomb after all that. I've been holding on to the last one. Could you put it in the odd keystone with the others? How exactly do we hold these wisps? Like, do we have some kind of like jar with just all of them floating in there? I mean, they're ghosts. Wait, before I tell you, Orangi, what do you think of me? I think you're freaking creepy. You're probably a spirit tomb yourself, aren't you? Or some kind of lost soul? A strange one, huh? Yeah, you're right. You really do understand me. Here it goes. The final wisp is me, right? The traveler who used that strange magic will finally forget. Wait, what? Close your eyes for a sec, would ya? Oh, gosh. It gets even creepier, doesn't it? Let me guess. As our eyes was closed, the little girl disappears, right? Yep. She was the final wisp. Basically, a lost soul. Oh, wait. D I thought she was going to turn into Spirit Tomb. That would have been crazy. But here it is. The final wisp. We shall collect it. And with it, hopefully take on our very own Spirit Tomb. The odd keystone disappeared without a trace. Wait, was the odd keystone, wasn't it a little one we were holding? Making you gather all those wisps was my last bit of mischief. Thank you for playing along. Please, don't forget about me. How could I? Wait, what? There's no spirit tomb. After all that? No, there's no way. We sense the presence of a strange Pokemon. Where is it? I see the eye above my, wait, what the frick? How are you just gonna sneak up on me like that, bro? Okay, well, hold up. I'm curious, can we actually just use sticky globs? Uh, <laughs> wow, all right, well, here you go. Gigaton ball to match the darkness of Spiritomb. We got the matte black ball, and that is gonna catch real nice and easy. Oh wait, that's it. Do we get another Spiritomb if we come back later? I feel like that was really anticlimactic. Like it just showed up behind us. I thought there was at least gonna be a cutscene where it comes out of this giant rock or something. I mean, this is basically a giant odd keystone, right? The one that we had in our key items. Yeah, it's gone. 
So at least that is another legendary added into the mix. And I think that should be the last Pokemon in the decks, at least from the ones I've seen. You guys have actually told me that Pokemon you've never seen don't even appear in the decks apparently. So we still got a couple more after Spiritomb. I got curious if we could maybe at least see Spiritomb respawning, but apparently we've just got a bunch of other creepy Pokemon here instead. That's weird. What are you guys doing here? Okay, well, let's uh, fight them with our newly acquired Spirit! Not you, Ghastly. I'm talking about this one right here, who can still get hit by ghost moves, but at least it's not super effective. Let's see what you got, Spirit. Shadow Ballum! I'm curious then if there is any other way to get Spirit Tomb in the game or if maybe you can shiny hunt that one. Let me know in the comments if you guys are aware of any of that stuff. And if you enjoyed, make sure to smash that like button. I would love to get my redemption for the shiny Spirit Tomb I missed in Sword and Shield. So I wonder if maybe you can soft reset for this one and potentially get a shiny. That'd be pretty cool.